Dear Mr. Postman, please send me my pens. Love, Doug. P.S. No more cheese. And get a note to the milkman. No more cheese. Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today is the fourth and last day of summer here in Calgary. It started on Monday with sun and heat and a total lack of hail, snow and sleet. Tomorrow will bring the beginning of what we Calgarians call pre-winter, which consists of rain, hail, snow, and frostbite while waiting by frozen empty mailboxes for pens I ordered last Christmas. Oh man, it's cold. Hey, that's cold. But today is about my Waterman Karen. I bought this pen on Amazon a few weeks ago with my second YouTube paycheck. It was an incredible deal, but it came with a fine nib. I didn't want a fine nib, I wanted a medium. But Waterman has this marvelous exchange program where they will exchange your nib for any other nib free of charge as long as the nib has never been used or inked. So after I did a first looks video of this gorgeous fountain pen, I sent it off across the ocean to France to have it changed to a medium. And now it's back and it has ink in it. I'm really excited to show it to you right now. Now that I have my Karen back in my hands, I'm finally able to experience writing with this work of art. I was not even allowed to dip the nib to try it before I had to pack it off for its round trip to France and back. It took three days to get there where they had it for a week and then three days to return. So 13 days in total with shipping completely covered by Waterman. I packed it in bubble pack as they specifically said not to send the box. It came back in a rigid adjustable length sturdy plastic tube which was marked with the Parker and Waterman logos. I have to say the complete service and personal touch from Waterman was a great experience and set my mind at ease about this pen. They were very professional and it was impressive. Now about the writing experience. In my first looks video, I covered the parts and features of this pen and provided some measurements. So in this video, I'm going to focus on the writing experience. This pen is an absolute joy. It not only looks like a work of art, it feels like one as well. This pen begs to be posted and is incredibly well balanced in the hand, which makes the weight almost disappear, except for providing the perfect amount of heft, making it feel substantial in the hand. You know you're writing with a special instrument here. And while you are experiencing tactile heaven, you can feast your eyes on the sleek, elegant lines of this yacht of a fountain pen. Hey, you scratch my ankle. Before I put this incredible inlaid 18 karat gold nib to paper, let's get some pen porn close-ups of it. I mentioned in my previous video but it bears repeating how beautifully the designers have evoked the sails of a sailing vessel or a spinnaker of a sailing yacht into the sweeping lines of gold against black on this nib. Now let's put this nib where it belongs, on paper. I finally made the decision on which ink to use. With the Karen, I decided to follow the will of the poll that I posted on my community YouTube tab and went with the clear choice winner in that poll Diamine Ancient Copper. There's the Ancient Copper, here's the bottle. I love this ink too, and it was kind of my choice. So I'm glad with that your choice matched my choice, because my choice would have won out anyway. Now everybody's happy. The other inks that were in the running were Robert Oster Astrakiza Rot and Canyon 
Rust from Monteverdi. So here we are with the Waterman. Cut in. And it is a medium. 18 karat gold. Nib. And the ink is diamine. Ancient copper. And let's check the wetness here. It's not a gusher by any stretch, but it is decently wet. There's little flex and the nib doesn't move that much. There's not a lot of bounce, but it makes up for it in just how incredibly smooth this is. We'll talk about this a little bit more later, but this nib is just like glass. And it, even though it's so smooth, it still gives you that a little bit of feedback that you might be able to hear on the page, which I really like. So I'm going to write a bit here and I'm going to speed it up and make a number of quotes and set a little bit of music for my enjoyment. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I usually start by talking about what I like and then looking for criticisms. But today I'm going to criticize first so I have plenty of time to gush about how much I adore this pen. The leaps of Pepe are upon you. Pepe's love is strong. 
Here's my brief list of complaints. The section plastic can get a bit scuffed and the nib will hard start now and then when I think too long between sentences. There. Done. Now for the huge list of likes. Let's start with the looks and then segue to writing. This is an incredibly gorgeous fountain pen. I can't believe I own it. That's another thing too. The price was a steal at around $130 Canadian or about 90 bucks US. Let's put that in perspective, shall we? This Visconti with a size five nib, steel, and a metal section cost me $325 Canadian. Still, the Van Gogh is a beautiful pen and I'm glad I own it, but the Karen was only $30 US more than this Conklin Durograph with a steel nib, and it's not this one, uh, that wouldn't write right out of the box. So, let's see, an 18 karat gold nib uh, Waterman Karen, or for $30 less, a steel nibbed Conklin Durograph. I don't know, what do you think? I think I would choose this one too. I think that's a no brainer. But let's get back to the looks. Just to look at this pen is worth the price of admission. The depth of that Rance lac finish is just stunning. The gold accents, the sweeping curves from the stern to the bow, this gentle ocean wave of a clip with its springy pivoting mechanism and the incredible 18 karat inlaid gold nib. Spectacular. And for writing, I've written with this pen constantly since its return from France. I was actually worried the nib would not do justice to the looks of the pen, but it matches and, and almost surpasses the look. As I said, I do get some hard starts. It'll probably hard start right now because I've had it open for so long. Oh, <laughs> when you know it started right up. But sometimes I'll get a hard start if I pause too long while I'm writing. But I'm going to have my nib maestro Jack Hernandez take a look at this nib to see if we can tune it up a bit. The smoothness and flow of this nib is really wonderful. I wrote the text for this entire video with this pen on Claire Fontaine, and it is just sublime. My fear now is that this pen will cloud my judgment as I try to review more and more different fountain pens. I know one of my future videos is going to have to be a comparison of my four gold nibs. I'll wait till I finish doing the review of my new Pilot Falcon before comparing it to my Karen and my vintage, yes, I said vintage. Schaefer Targa and my beloved Pilot E95S. So there you have it. Great pen. Take that to the bank. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.